Hi, I'm Angie and today we're making something a little bit different. So usually you see me doing either um, yeah, making chocolate bars or chocolate bonbons, but today I want to enrobe some chocolate. Uh, I'm not good at it to be honest. I rarely do it. I think the last time I've enrobed some chocolate was I would say maybe one or two years ago or so. So I'm really not good at it. Um, so that's why I'm a little bit scared of this one, but we'll make it work somehow. So here's what we're going to do. So first we will make um, a more firm flavored ganache. This will be our slab ganache. And then we cut it into pieces. We dip it into our chocolate, which is also called enrobing. And then uh, we also make it a little bit more pretty with some transfer sheets. So that's a game plan. I would say we just do it. Okay, here we go. So we start out with making our slab ganache. Here I have prepared a container and lined it with um, parchment paper. Um, just a regular Tupperware container and later we will pour in the ganache into this vessel. And here I have 75 grams of cream and I'm adding a little bit of thyme. I like to be very careful with, um, with herbs because they can be very, very strong. So I'll stick with that and see how they turn out. Now I bring the cream to a boil and then I let it steep for 10 minutes. Say this is boiling and I set it aside with the lid on for another 10 minutes. Okay, here we go. Now I'm fishing out the thyme and I'm adding about 13 grams of glucose syrup and now I'm boiling this mix again. for now and here I have 120 grams of dark chocolate you can also use milk chocolate whatever you want and now we're making our ganache and now we stir until we have formed a really nice glossy shiny ganache it's completely normal that it looks broken it's all good just keep stirring until all of your chocolate has melted this is looking pretty good now we're adding about 10 grams of cacao butter and three teaspoons of lemon juice. Just depending on how sour you like it. Add more or less, and then we stir it in. I will give it a try now, just to see if I will need more of the lemon. I'm adding one more, just because I like it like a little bit more acidic. And now I'm adding 13 grams of butter. And I'm going in with my immersion blender to make sure that I don't have any lumps in there. The question is, we're done with our ganache, but the question is, is this Tupperware too big? Because I also want to achieve some height. Let me see if I have something else. I have something like this. Huh. No, let's stick with this one here. Do you want the measurements of this maybe? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the measurements. Wait. This is about 5 inches and about 12 centimeters. And height is about, and height is about 5 centimeters and 2.5 inches. Give it a little bit of a knock so everything evens out. So that's it. That's our slab ganache. We leave this overnight, um, allow the ganache to crystallize, and then um, we work on it tomorrow. Now we're coming to the more decorative part. Um, so here I have a transfer sheet and we are going to paint it. But yeah, obviously this is way too big, so I'll just cut it in half. If you want a link, I have a link down in the description. Um, yeah, if you want to make your own transfer sheets as well. And I want to stick with like um, yellow, white and green because the topic is more like, um, yeah, lemon and you know. Um, so I think those colors will work nice. And so first, I'm adding sprinkles, so I start out here with the white, maybe a little bit more. Now I'm going in with this yellow here. Now I'm going in with the green and I want to do streaks. So it is possible that some of the colors will mix, but I think that's completely fine. And I have a second green that I will go over just to have a little bit more different greens in there. So 
this green here, the second one, is a little bit darker. Let's see how does this look. Not too bad, but I feel like I need another color. Let me see what I have. I also have this green mermaid at home, so I will also use that. Okay, and now I want to go um, in this direction here. Maybe I'm ruining everything now, but here we are. Okay, how does this look now? Not much of a difference. Well, okay, we'll leave it like that. What I'm going to do now is adding one layer of chocolate on top of my transfer sheet. At least that's what I found online. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, maybe it's because of more uh, stability. I'm not sure, but we're going to do it. We're going to try it. I've never done this before that way, but um, let's give it a shot. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to use this, um, okay, the well, obviously. Um, oh god, that's such a good start. Um, yeah, I'm just going to use my uh, my brush again. In the instruction where I found how to do this, um, it was actually in a book and then I have a link down below. Um, they're using a spatula. Um, maybe it would have been a better choice. Oh well. Okay, so this has pretty much set. Um, and it makes sense for me to have like three centimeter squares. And I'm supposed to cut only the chocolate and the color and not um, the sheet. So I'm just trying my best here to create to at least kind of even squares. Oh god. You know, today was the fun part and I am pretty sure that tomorrow will be a disaster. I'm just cutting in and I'm hoping for the best. And we leave it like that until tomorrow because um, yeah, the, uh, the sheet is kind of protecting um, our layers. So um, really at the very last minute, I will take these out, uh, break them up and place them on top of our chocolate. It is the next day, so here we go. Uh, I'll bring this out. And now we're cutting this three centimeters right three centimeter squares okay this is the most scary part for me because i'm just not doing great with measuring things okay so we will have a couple of smaller ones but that's fine that's fine okay let's just go for it Oh yeah, it's pretty set. It's a little bit hard, but yeah, it's manageable. Okay. Maybe I should have heaten up my uh, my knife a little bit and clean it after every cut, so you don't get these ugly um, edges. Okay, here we are. And obviously here the edges are smaller. I guess they're square-ish. Okay, so I will set them aside now, temper my chocolate, and then we're going to dip those into our chocolate. Okay, we have a little situation here. Um, yeah. Yesterday, I only cut um, uh, the chocolate and the colors, right? And not through uh, the sheet. And that's an instruction I found online. Cool. But I get my recipe from this book. 
uh, and actually that's how they are supposed to look like. Um, they will not look like this, just saying. Their instruction is a little bit different, at least on the transfer sheet. Um, so we're mixing both methods. What could possibly go wrong? So what we're going to do now is, oh, well, you see what's happening here already. Um, so I'm taking off uh, the, the little uh, pieces now and just place it on top later. The book describes it a little bit different, but well, it's too late now. But that's how they look. Pretty good, actually. So in the end, it would be nice if it would look like this. I do not have a dipping fork, so I'm just using a regular one. Here goes nothing. This is my tempered chocolate. I never enrobe things, never. Because, um, well, I don't necessarily, oh God. I don't really like doing it. And I don't like doing it, I probably because I never do it and I don't have to practice. Okay, and we're placing, oh my god, I've already screwed this up. Yeah, practice makes perfect. Oh god. Okay, next one. Whew, I'm sweating. Now I'm trying to show you better <laughs> what I'm doing because I'm not... Um, as stressed anymore because at least I have some good ones. Let's take this one here. So I dump, dump it in. Make sure that it's completely covered in chocolate. Tap off the chocolate. And that's that. And then I place one of those pieces on top. Okay, now they need to set completely and then um, I show you how they look like from all sides and angles. They're all pretty much set now and I want to show you what you can do if you have feet like this overflowing chocolate here um, is called a foot or uh, feet and we can just cut them. If you have a warm knife just yeah cut it a little bit so it doesn't look as bad anymore um, then you have a cleaner edge. Um, okay, let me show you one. They are not perfect, okay? They are not perfect, but I think they turned out much, much better than I thought they would. Um, I made them pretty big. Um, maybe I should have stick to um, maybe two centimeter squares. Maybe that would have been a little bit better. Um, but yeah, that's how they look. Are they uniform? No. They're kind of squares, okay? They're kind of squares. That needs to be good enough. And I also made the transfer sheet um, a little bit too big. So I never made anything like this before. So I think for that it's a success. But it's just with everything. You just have to practice. And those are the little leftovers here. Um, okay, now to the most important thing. Let's give one a try. How about the small ugly one here? It is really, really good. Um, the center is super creamy and super nice. Um, maybe I would add a tiny little bit of more lemon, maybe some lemon zest next time. And the time's also coming through, but it is not at all overpowering. So I really like that. I wouldn't add more to the cream. Yeah, I'm surprised how well this turned out and um, today wasn't horrible at all. Um, I think it, it turned out pretty cute. I want to make one or two more points um, about the end result and maybe um, yeah, talk a little bit what I would do different next time. Number one, they turned out pretty big. So next time I wouldn't do three centimeter squares, but maybe two centimeter squares. So they're just a little bit easier to eat and just a little bit smaller. I would add um, a little bit more lemon and maybe even add a little bit of the lemon zest um, just to get a more lemony flavor. And maybe for the next project I would um, invest in a dipping fork. They're like, I don't know, maybe nine or ten bucks for three of those forks. Um, yeah, so I think next time I would invest in a dipping fork. And the biggest point for me is this. Let me show you. You might have already seen this in the video, but let me show you closer. Here you go. Um, there's a gap between uh, the ganache part and the transfer sheet color part and yeah I don't like that I like this is bothering me not only a little it is bothering me and what I did I only placed the transfer sheet or the colors with the chocolate on top like I didn't put any pressure in I was just placing it on top so next time um, I will like 
just add a little bit of pressure so everything becomes more flush um, because now I have like this weird shape on top so that's what I would do differently next time just add a little bit more pressure to make it look more even and more pretty so that's definitely one of my big uh, points that I would do different next time and those are all the points I wanted to mention here in the end. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, you know what to do. Leave them down below. Send me a DM on Instagram at chocolate beer. And oh, one more thing. They are not as hard to make as I thought they would be. Like I was really scared about all the measuring parts and everything. And no, they don't look perfect. But if I do it again and again and again, they will look pretty good. I'm pretty sure about that. So you should definitely make those and let me know how it goes. Okay, but that's all. Have a good one. Bye.